Raven Jackson was a 24-year-old African-American fitness influencer, CEO, motivational speaker, and model. She dedicated her time here on Earth to physical health, mental wellness, and giving back to the youth within the Black community. Raven was an alumni at Jacksonville State University, where she had a very active part in the student unions and worked to motivate and empower other students. Raven was a natural-born leader with a passion for helping people around her. In 2017, she created a program called Real Talk with Raven, aka RTR. RTR is a program that emphasizes mental health and awareness while providing a safe, inviting, and nurturing space to facilitate growth and awareness. Raven held RTR seminars on campus where hundreds of students would come to eat, talk, and unwind with one another. The first seminar was called The Power of Perception. During this seminar, Raven encouraged her classmates to understand that everyone has a different perception because everyone has a different story. Wait, also protect your peace. You have to learn how to protect your peace. That's something I dealt with for a long time because I was raised in a family where we didn't say I love you. So I didn't even know how to love you. I didn't even know what love was. I didn't Raven kept it real with her classmates. She shared her story that she didn't know what true love was because she was never told I love you as a child or felt love from the adults around her. And I was a little bit shocked when I heard her say that, you know, as parents, it is your responsibility to make sure that you tell your children you love them, you encourage them with kind words and with love. But nevertheless, a blind man could see how big of a heart Raven had. Raven was truly an ideal college student. She got good grades. She worked well in and outside of the classroom. She even created a book giveaway that would help students who couldn't afford textbooks. And the proceeds went to the JSU Animal Clinic. If there was a mental health forum or panel, Raven was either on it or behind the scenes planning it. She knew very well at a young age the importance of mental health. She created Mental Health Mondays for people suffering with mental health to submit their problems to her for encouragement and advice. And on May 22nd, 2018, she got this submission. Someone wrote, I've been going through a rough path mentally due to school and life back at home with my folks. Certain things have turned me into a different person and I really feel like I'm fighting this battle alone. And nobody understands me. So this was Raven's response. This situation specifically, I need more details. So you are gonna have to slide in my DM like ASAP. You don't have no choice, get there. But you say you're fighting this battle alone and nobody understands you. You are never alone. There is almost always, you know what, not even almost, there's always someone going through something similar as you, someone that can help you, someone more experienced, someone who is anointed by God that can even, you know, pray for you. You just need to reach out because there's somebody who will understand you. There's somebody who will talk you through it, get you through it, and work with you. There's somebody who can give you advice. Just talk to somebody. Talk to me. Like I said, you don't have a choice right now. You need to get in my DM right now and talk to me. ASAP. On April 16, 2018, Raven got a submission where someone admitted that they had about four S attempts and was dealing with depression and anxiety. This was Raven's response. I would like to just start out by saying that I am so glad that you are still here. This is just be affirmation to you that God does have something bigger in store for you. And I'm glad you grew past that phase because yikes. But self-love is going to be something that you deal with for most of your young adulthood life and maybe most of your life. Simply because you're not going to wake up every day and feel worth it. You're not going to wake up every day and love yourself. You're not going to wake up every day and feel pretty. But you're going to realize that it's okay. It's, gonna, it's okay to be imperfect. It's okay to have ups and downs because it's a part of life. And you will get through it and you will grow past it. Say it with me. Also, yes, set realistic goals for yourself. Because when you set short-term and long-term goals, it gives you a reason to wake up in the morning. It gives you a reason to go out and do. It gives you motivation. And motivation to motivate others. But I only have a minute, so please, if you want to talk more, DM me. I am here. As Raven grew into womanhood, she kept the exact same heart, and many of her hobbies turned into a big profit for her. She loved working out and the mental and physical results from exercise. She was what you would call a gym rat, <laughs> which then became a booming business for her online. 
Raven had what most black women would call body goals, slim waist, and curves without going under the knife. She had what many fitness influencers didn't have, and that was her aura, which was just so contagious and joyous that everyone who knew her loved her. She motivated black women to get in shape and get active. Raven had boot camps, wellness retreats, and raving reviews about her one-of-a-kind products. She was a dedicated and hands-on coach to many of her clients. Three, two, one, let's go! August is officially Black Business Month. If you're a Black-owned business, use this sound to show your products. Everyone else, support by liking, commenting, and sharing. Her online influence began to skyrocket on TikTok and Instagram, and people became more and more attracted to her beauty, her lifestyle, and her mindset. Looking through Raven's accounts is literally like watching a caterpillar turn into a butterfly. But you can't keep doing the same shit over and over again. Shit ain't gonna get you nowhere but in the same place over and over again. You can't keep being in those same places. You can't keep being around those same motherfuckers, doing the same things, and thinking you're gonna be a different person in the next four months. In the next four months, I need you to dedicate yourself to doing something different, for real. Whether it's one thing, two things, whether it's one people, two people, something gotta change. Especially if you're at a point in your life where you feel like you're stagnant. You gotta try different in 2020, Raven started dating Chicago rapper 600 Breezy. From looking at their social media accounts, it doesn't really look like they had a very public relationship. They did post pictures of each other here and there. But for the most part, they kept their relationship off of social media and focused on their businesses while online. And things seemed to be going great for Raven. She was attracting more customers and more followers. But one day, she came online to share with her followers that she had been in so much pain and that the doctors just could not help her. She said that she's been to multiple doctors and they wouldn't do proper tests on her or acknowledge her pain and would send her home with something like Tylenol or nothing at all. She finally saw a female doctor and that made all the difference. She ran tests on her and found small cysts on her ovaries. Raven was diagnosed with PCOS. PCOS is polycystic ovarian syndrome. PCOS is a hormonal disorder causing enlarged ovaries with cysts on the outer edges. PCOS isn't well-researched, but there are over 200,000 cases of PCOS among women every year, so it's actually very common and not well-researched. Some symptoms of PCOS is depression, irregular periods, no periods, acne, facial hair, hair loss on the head, weight gain, and more. Women with PCOS can struggle to become pregnant and are at higher risk of developing complications during pregnancy. However, by managing the symptoms, many women with PCOS can become pregnant and have healthy babies. Raven learned that diet plays a big role in managing depression, stress, and stomach pain, so she started to change her diet. She has a vlog titled, What I Eat in a Day Naturally to Treat Ovarian Cysts, PCOS, Fibroids, Endometriosis. And the video is still up on her channel, so if this is something that you or a loved one is going through, feel free to dive deep on YouTube. There is a lot of information on PCOS, fibroids, infertility, etc. Some people really just don't want to have kids, and that's me. I don't want to have kids. I wish I, could, I wish they could just get here and teleport and just be here, like the stork drop them off or some shit. I don't know, but I don't want to have them. I'm my vagina. Have y'all seen that? Have y'all seen people giving birth out their vagina because I follow several give birth pages on Instagram. That shit ain't lit. That shit don't look easy or fun or none of that shit. It's amazing. But do I want to do it? No, I don't care. I don't... Mm -mm. Raven made a TikTok saying that she did not want to have kids and how painful it looked. And when you're already dealing with pain as a woman on an everyday basis, having children and seeing the excruciating pain that comes with it is probably what made her feel anti having babies vaginally.
And when it came to family life, Raven did make it known that her family wasn't very supportive of her and that if they believed in her, that she would be further along in her businesses and in life. She said, I don't think people understand how much it hurts when the people you love don't support your dreams or business ventures. Support is everything. My own family will be minutes away from my events, but have never been to a single one. My own city has yet to acknowledge me outside of my relationship to a man. I never let it deter me, but it's not like I don't feel it. You could literally be putting your all into something you believe in, and the people you look to for support will leave you hanging. But when it's time to ask for money, free promotion, or help, then your first priority. Crazy. Sometimes I just think how much further I would be if people would just believe in me. I do my own graphic design, website design, branding, marketing, processing, packaging, shipping, product design, package design, digital program design, customer service, ambassador outreach, promotion, taxes, and I even shoot my own content with a tripod. No manager, no one to even call and ask for business advice because I just don't come from that. The crazy part is instead of working these dead end jobs, if we just support each other, we would have our own nail salons and gas stations in our own neighborhoods. I say that to say this, at one point in time, the belief that I had in myself and God was all I had. It was all that I needed. I'm on my way to making my first six figures this year. I'm a 24 year old black woman from Canton, Mississippi. And next year, my goal is a million. I cannot afford to fail. I don't have a safety net. If if some shit fuck over here, I don't have nobody to help me. See, that's y'all problem. Y'all got help. You got help. So you you see failure as an option. It's not an option for me. When you start looking at life like that, you start to move different. That's y'all problem. You you think you think somebody gonna save you? When you know ain't nobody to save you, there to save you, you move different. You you stop being so careless. You stop moving so frivolously. Lee. You stop being so generous with your time because you know how important it is and you know you can't get it back. That's y'all problem. See, see y'all move. Y'all move like like this shit ain't life or death. Raven was holding up her businesses on her own two shoulders with no one to depend on for support or guidance. She did learn as she went and was blessed for her hard work with a growing success. On the outside, viewers would see a beautiful woman who was happy with a booming business, but on the inside, there was a girl who was struggling and just wanted help and love. And it all came as a shock to the world to find out that such a beautiful woman inside out with so much life and love had passed away. The internet went into detective mode to find out what happened to Raven Jackson. 600 Breezy posted a goodbye letter Raven sent him, suggesting that she took her own life by jumping off a bridge. But it later came out that Raven was actually found a few days later unalive in her apartment from a gunshot to the head. Her cause of death was S. Fans and family of Raven began to question 600 Breezy and his alleged text from Raven that did not align with the reports. He then posted that the text messages were not her last words, but that Raven has sent him this before. So this raised even more red flags and eyebrows. If your girlfriend was suicidal before, why didn't he notify the police, family, someone who could help her? Why did he leave her alone without any contact for a few days? Where was her family? This woman was literally left to deal with her mental demons alone. She lived with a feeling of being unloved no matter how much love she gave others. And this is why it's so important to check on your loved ones every day or every few days if you can. Like... The fact that she went days and days and days without anyone knowing that she was not alive is a major red flag. And in fact, many of her fans did not believe that she committed S, but that she was in fact M. And many of her fans began to side-eye 600 Breezy. Now, 600 Breezy had a lot of baby mama drama connected to him that I'm sure was a part of Raven's unhappiness. Um, 600 Breezy has an alleged baby mama, a rapper named Queen Key, who claims that he is the father of her triplets. 600 Breezy denies that he is the father and that Queen Key won't allow him to get tested. He said, y'all basically saying I don't get the right to know a thousand percent if they're my kids. Just take care of them because she said they are. Right. Never going to happen. Label me a deadbeat. That's cool. But I'm not going out like that. Any other woman would have given me the test to shut me the F up a long time ago. So what's stopping her? But you can't beat the internet. Y'all got it, boss. 
I've been asking for a test publicly since they were in her stomach, and she keeps saying no. But y'all don't care. She the sob story. Single mom with three kids. Of course, y'all gonna take her side. And so Queen Key did not let up off of Breezy's neck and would constantly blast him on social media as a deadbeat parent. I mean, if it was his birthday, she was like, you a deadbeat. He would post about being sober and she would say, okay, you sober enough to come get these kids? Like, it was really a hot ghetto mess. And they honestly could have squashed all of that with a simple paternity test. And you cannot tell me that this beef between Key and Breezy didn't have a negative impact on Raven. As a woman, I'm sure she understood another woman wanting the father of his children to be there for them. But on the flip side, he's also her boyfriend. So I'm sure he told her his side of the story as well and probably assured her that those were not his kids. Maybe they didn't have unprotected sex. But either way, Raven did not interfere with their drama. She literally minded the business that paid her, okay? But it did come out that one day last year, Queen Key contacted Raven via DMs with claims of 600 Breezy having AIDS and being a closeted gay man. Queen Key told Raven, tell that gay deadbeat he finna be put on child support and some more ish. You must be like 19, sucking his infested, you know what? That be sad as hell. He effed up speaking on me. I'm finna eat his up. Whatever blood test he want, he can get it. Or matter of fact, let him know I'm going to show him a blood test once he show me his blood test. Stating he don't got AIDS. Now, in my opinion, I really don't care how mad you are at the man. You do not direct that energy towards the next woman, okay? Like, this was really uncalled for. All of that could have been sent directly to him. She could have handled that with lawyers, with doctors, with the courts, without involving Raven. And Breezy did say that that message from Queen Key did affect Raven mentally. Breezy claims that Raven tried to commit S- after she got that message. In an interview, he said, this B was part of the problem. I had to stop my girl from caring herself last year because Key told her I had AIDS, which was a lie. She was sold down and out for a week straight until our results came back good, he added. Key wants me. It's not about the kids. She hated to see me happy. He also provided a screenshot that Key allegedly sent to Raven. She's disrespectful, Breezy told us. Fuck them kids on me. Them trippers on me. That bitch started that room because I ain't want her. I ain't want her. I want them kids. She running around to me talking about some gang shit. Bitch, you be a single parent. I don't give if I if I am boy ain't the dead. And they were just going back and forth online via Twitter, just insulting each other. He said he don't care if they his kids. He ain't taking care of them kids. So she's going to be a single mother of triplets for the rest of her life. She said, how the F I'm going to feel bad for an end who don't take care of his kids because his feelings hurt. Boy F you. Her death ain't about you. I'm sad that happened to her. That's literally horrible. But I cannot sit back and let this big goofy and trick y'all like I can't. And I really think it's ridiculous that at a time where this woman literally lost her life, these two people are online arguing about ghetto shit. <laughs> and this is truly sad all around. I mean, Raven deserved to be here. She added so much light and love to the world. She deserved to be here and receive that light and love as well. And I learned that sometimes the most brave and caring people are the most vulnerable and need the most protection. No matter how strong and encouraging and powerful they look on the outside, they need just as much love and protection on the inside. Earlier in the year, she wrote in a Facebook post, even if I die tomorrow, I don't want anyone to feel guilt for not talking to me. That's probably what I wanted. Don't be remorseful. Stand on everything you did or said to me while I was in this realm. I already forgave you. Use my death for sympathy, to get out of work or to get out of jury duty or to simply take a break. Whatever you can use it for, milk it. Repost my content and tag me as much as you want. Lie like we were close. I promise once I'm gone, I will not care. I really don't even care much at all now. Uh, just just so sad, just so heartbreaking that she felt that way. Um, and I really thought about and wondered, who is she talking to? You know, is she talking to 600 Breezy? Is she talking to those fake and phony family members? Who knows? I mean, look at it like this. We're fighting 
for our lives. Lives that we barely want to live. The world doesn't stop because you're hurting or because you need a break. It keeps going. You just have to keep going with it. Rest in peace to Raven Jackson. I will continue to hold on to her motivational words because they still reign true.